were on fire when I met you Born with a longing for the open world You had a hunger burning in your heart Enough to tear the world apart We were like outlaws on the west coast In our footprints in the wet sand Now our love is more like a remedy And our world is a forgotten land Cause I can see the fire in your eyes Burning like a hurricane Blowing through the forest One day with our troubles far behind us We will look back at all we've been through Cause I can see the fire in your eyes Going through the falling rain I see you through the mask you wear And I'll do anything to hold you near saya adalah rumput laut yang baru saja dipanen oleh uh, petani sekarang di timur untuk uh, setelah itu dikeringkan dijual Sukmawati Sukmawati oh, namanya bagus sekali uh, di mana ibu tanam atau pelihara rumput laut ini oh, berapa luas Yang bosnya siapa? Ya, oh ya ya oke. Okay. With China and Indonesia responsible for 84.6% of that production. Needless to say, imperial core countries like the United States are chomping at the bit to fill their coastal waters with seaweed farms, especially considering their benefits. But can these macroalgae actually fulfill their host of proposed promises? Seaweed farming is growing in popularity across the world for a myriad of reasons. Some farmers grow them to serve demand for edible seaweed in a wide range of dishes like sushi, while others grow them for animal feed, supposedly aiding the health of livestock guts and drastically reducing the methane emissions of meat as a result. Still others are spurred on by seaweed's potential to sequester substantial amounts of carbon in ocean sediments and the deep sea. It's here with carbon sequestration that we'll begin to unpack the benefits of seaweed groves. Looking at wild seaweed, which is an umbrella term for thousands of species of large algae, scientists have discovered their immense capacity to draw carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and lock it back into the earth or the deep ocean. 
One research paper estimates that macroalgae sequester roughly 173 teragrams of carbon per year globally. To put that in perspective, that's the equivalent of sequestering the emissions of 8.65 million people living in the United States each year. And looking towards seaweed aquaculture, this paper claims that a square kilometer of seaweed farm could sequester 1,500 tons of CO2 every year, which would be like reversing the footprint of 300 people living in China or 75 people living in the US every single year. To be clear, this is a rough estimate of carbon removal. The body of research and recording mechanisms are still in their infancy. So it's hard to get exact numbers on how much carbon wild and domesticated seaweed is actually capturing. That being said, there are a host of other benefits that seaweed provides to coastal ecosystems. Seaweed farms, when introduced, have provided rich habitats for sea life, deacidified their surrounding waters, created storm and flood resilient coastlines by buffering wave energy, as well as provided oxygen-rich oases in oxygen-deprived zones. These are all exciting prospects. Along the Chinese coast, for example, seaweed farms introduced near dead zones successfully mitigated deadly toxic algal blooms, while farms off the coast of Costa Rica noticed that the cultivated seaweed rapidly attracted biodiversity. But part of the reason seaweed aquaculture is so appealing is that it requires few inputs and seaweed grows incredibly fast. You don't need fertilizer, herbicides, or pesticides, and seaweed mostly takes care of itself, which means that an ocean farm is comparatively easier to start and maintain than its on-land cousin. In short, seaweed farming, if done right, could potentially sequester millions of metric tons of carbon, all while repairing ecosystems and providing buffer zones for coastal communities. But emphasis on if done right and potentially, because our knowledge of the effects of seaweed farming on carbon sequestration, as well as habitat restoration, is still growing. A quick Google search of seaweed farming reveals a lot about the excitement over the potential of this carbon sequestration powerhouse. Articles like this, or this, feel like 19th century gold rush promoters of the American West. That much hype raises alarm bells for me, especially considering this recent scientific paper that has called into question seaweed's potential for carbon sequestration. It points out that previous studies have failed to account for the contribution of the influx of organic material and plankton that wash into wild seaweed groves, providing extra food for sea life and ultimately leading to significantly more carbon dioxide emissions. The paper claims that as a result, wild seaweed forests might actually be a net source of carbon. I use this paper not to discount seaweed sequestration wholesale, but merely to demonstrate that research on these practices are extremely new and evolving. We are still in the midst of parsing out exactly how wild seaweed and seaweed farming contributes to our ecosystems. To be clear, many scientists in the field have found the research promising. But we have to be careful about how we treat and implement these types of natural sequestration solutions. If it's used just as another carbon offset scheme, letting the fossil fuel industry continue generating emissions with impunity, then seaweed farming could be a dangerous proposition, especially because we aren't clear how much seaweed farming sequesters. Expanding seaweed farming, then, should not be viewed as an excuse to continue fossil-fueled capitalism. It is instead an exciting tool in a wide-ranging toolkit that should be used for the struggle to build a zero-carbon world free of fossil fuels and capitalist extraction. Seaweed represents a mode of agriculture that would tie humans back to the earth and the sea. But to do so, seaweed farming must not just be seen as another novelty for a startup to automate. Seaweed farming is a piece of an amazingly complex web of low carbon, carbon negative, and justice oriented actions and ideas that we must integrate to build a better world. Because at the end of the day, even if seaweed farms expand to pepper the world's coastline and draw down millions of tons of carbon from the atmosphere, it will not be enough. Yes, it will certainly help, but if we continue to grow our emissions footprint as our capitalist system is currently doing right now, using seaweed farming to sequester carbon from the atmosphere will be like trying to fill an ever-expanding hole. 
So the natural carbon capture mechanisms of seaweed farming have to be combined with political tendencies like eco-socialist degrowth that seek a contraction of production in the imperial core and an expansion of well-being for the periphery. At the end of the day, seaweed farming might be a small piece of an exciting new future. But that future has already begun to take shape in the seaweed harvested along the coastlines of the world. With each harvest of seaweed, we're bringing ourselves closer to that future by putting good food on our plates and repairing the harm of centuries of environmental damage. But what kind of seaweed farms are springing up across global coastlines? Are they small or massive industrial operations? How is the current seaweed boom being managed and where is all of that seaweed going? Those are some of the questions I answer in the bonus section to this video I've uploaded on Nebula all about the current state of the seaweed boom, especially in America and Europe. 